Hello Wade Explorers, thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, I want to thank you for watching. In this episode, we shall be looking on how the country of France has lost its economic grip on West Africa. We will explore this like never before seen. We shall dive into the specifics as to the reason why the country of France has become a lot concerned as with regards to its position and influence in the region. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. France is under fire in parts of West Africa for its alleged stronghold on the continent's economy. Anti-French sentiment in Mali has spread to Burkina Faso, where opinion leaders accuse the former colony power of profiteering. In fact, the French economic presence is in decline with regards to specifics. Close to a third of Africa's countries have been under French control at some point in their history. This has a strong impact in cultural, military, economic affairs and lot others. But 60 years after independence, France is no longer the dominant power in this particular region. The decline began in the early 2000s and over the last two decades, France has been stripped of its title as the continent's leading supplier and investor. While French exports to Africa have significantly increased, their overall value has halved between 2000 and 2001 based on figures. This is largely due to the surge in demand from African consumers which has increased fourfold and the emergence of new competitors like China, Russia, also Turkey, the United States and other countries like Germany and also the Netherlands and a lot of other countries who are vying for position in growth and development and investment in infrastructure in the continent. Today we're taking a look at how one country, France, is approaching this challenge. We're talking with Chrysula Zakharopoulou, the French Minister of State for Development, and before that a member of the European Parliament. Madam Minister, thank you so much for joining us on set today. Do you think, I'm going to ask this um, respectfully because I know you have such an unusual past. You were born in Greece, you have a Greek name, raised in Italy, member of the European Parliament. Um, you're now a French minister, and it's very unusual because you have a lot of identities wrapped up in... in, in European in, identity. Yeah, in European, yeah, European identity. But many nations have complicated histories, and France has a complicated history with the African continent, uh, a, a, a colonial past. And when I talk to African leaders, it's still out there in the air. You can feel sensitivities about colonial past. Are there elements of this that explain that why France is stepping forward that wants, wants to create a reset with Africa? And are the African leaders you're dealing with open to that reset? Thank you for this question. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it is true that uh, I'm very honored that President Macron chose me to make uh, uh, the development policy of the government and particularly the relationship with the African continent. Mm. And, you st and as you said, uh, the fact that I lived uh, in three countries, uh, the fact that I have uh, this vision of the world uh, helps me a lot. Mm. It is true that my country, France, has um, a rich history, sometimes difficult, mm -hmm. as you said. There are uh, some taboo, there are scars from mm. the past. But uh, when President Macron arrived, I have to tell you, first of all, that um, the relationship between France and the uh, countries of the Afri African continent uh, is, uh, is, was and is his priority. Hmm. So he worked a lot uh, and he had to, uh, the courage to deal with all the question of history. That was not easy. It's the first president mm -hmm. who did that. What this means? That, um, he called the historians. Uh, he said that uh, we have to make a memorial dialogue and uh, we see that um, we have now the new relationship with mm. the Rwanda, but also all of the, uh, the, the dialogue, memorial dialogue for Algeria, uh, for Cameroon. And after we had something, the restitution of cultural artifacts in Benin that mm. is unique in, in the world. So this is the past, but at the same, at the same time, he reset, because he said, this is the past, we cannot deny, but we have to look forward. Mm. And this is 
fantastic now because uh, he uh, addressed a lot to the new generation. You know very well that 70% more or less of the, uh, of, uh, the African population are young, mm -hmm. are people under 25 years old. So he said that uh, France is here with a new face and mm -hmm. that we want to create a people-to-people -people relationship. And uh, we, uh, we go out from ed and we speak about partnership. We want to be partners, equal partners. And this is the new story that we create with the continent, not only with the Francophone countries, with the Anglophone countries, wherever we can create partners. And uh, this is what I do. You know, I'm always on the field. I visit already 20 countries, and I can tell you that we change this new narrative. Africa is not up for grabs. However, the African countries have opened their borders for doing business. China began eating into France's market share in early 2000 and overtook it in 2007. China now has over 17% of the African market, three times more than France. If you look at different specifics on looking at the shifting African partnership with regards to the operations in things happening in the region. Five years ago, German overtook France as Europe's leading supplier to Africa in terms of investment in the continent of Africa. The Netherlands is now in the poor position, partly because many multinationals choose to register their headquarters there to benefit from lower corporation tax. A closer look at France's foreign trade figures reveal that its main African partners no longer come from the future French-speaking West African regions. These countries count for less than 1% of France's market share. France top African trading partners are Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia, followed by English-speaking Nigeria and South Africa. The question here is that France is really sliding in the ranking. So why is anti-French sentiment growing in parts of West Africa? And when the French economic presence on the continent overall is slipping? This is the question that we are looking at here. Let me ask you a complicated question here. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little sensitive, but the, the new prime minister of Italy, Giorgia Meloni, your country you've come, has come out and said, hey, we could solve this immigrant problem if France just stopped, you know, all of its, um, uh, uh, you know, essentially its exploitation of, of Africa. I don't want to ask it that way. What I want to ask is, as you're out there, because you've just defined the partnership, one of the things I've been interested in is how do Africans see us? How do they see France? How do they see China? Do they see us as partners or do they see America as maybe sometimes we're interested, sometimes we're not? Do they see China as providing an alternative? Is Europe providing you know, a more stable thing? I'd just be really interested in the lessons that you've learned and what you can share with Americans and also Chinese that may be watching this about approaches to Africa. Because I have to tell you, there's a lot of distrust in Africa about everybody's plans for Africa. And even in Rwanda, where I interviewed President Paul Kagame, I said, yes. You all talk about Africa and African states as if they're somehow a function of the West or a function of what China is doing with the United States. We're going to lift ourselves up. And I found it very insightful. So I'd just love to get your lessons and any response you have for the Italian Prime Minister. Yes. I'd like to say, first of all, that um, uh, the relationship that I try to construct, it is uh, a relationship of respect. And this is very important. Uh, I think that uh, uh, all the people that I know from the African continents, they understand. And this is true. I say to them, you are 1.4 billion of people. Uh, you, you are young. You have a lot of project. Uh, you are a market also. Yes, all of us, we have interest. And it's normal. We have economic interest, but also other type of interest, like, for example, when you fight mm. uh, against climate change. Yes, it's a common interest. Mm. When you fight for a global health, yes. But at the same time, what uh, I explain to them, it is uh, how you create this relationship. What we propose as France and as Europe, it is uh, uh, this uh, a new partnership that is based on uh, 
If you want, uh, I say always, there are African problem, African solution, and we are there. If they want, that we can support, that uh, we can construct something together to find solution. This is what they called win to win. We call all of us win to win relationship. Mm -hmm. But it means that we have to be clear with the people. And this is what I do. Yes, we have common interest. But, uh, and what I say also uh, to the Americans and to all, we have to respect the African continent. It is an equal partners like uh, uh, all around the world. Mm. So what I have to say to Madame Meloni, uh, I know very well Italy. I lived in Italy. I know how they, the hospitality and the open mind. So I trust the Italian people. <laughs> Although the West African region accounts for a little of France's foreign trade, France is still the leading European supplier. More generally, accusations that France has too much control reflects multiple grievances that are not always related to the economy. With regards to this, according to the annual African Lead Survey of African leaders conducted by the French Employer Association, known as CIAN, France's image deteriorating year on year in the continent of Africa. France ranks sixth in the list of most appreciated non-African countries for behind the top three, the United States, Germany and Canada. In the ranking of countries deemed most beneficial to Africa, France is ninth, just behind Turkey and the United Arab Emirates. Once again, the US, China and Germany are at the top. If you are new to this channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos with your different network. The question here is that France is struggling to correct this image deficit which has impacted its trade and development in the African continent. Africa is not what it used to be in the, in the past. Africa has transformed. Africa is open for business. France is undertaking a series of political initiatives to climb back on its ranking that it were before. They include a summit on financing African economies in several ways, coming into partnership, encouraging French companies to go and also invest in infrastructure across the continent. During the last African-France summit in Montpellier, the government targeted influencers and semi-medium-sized enterprises in hope of getting new leaders of opinion on board to shape the France's policy. French authorities are also organizing regular meetings between French and African business leaders to strengthen economic ties. France has ignored the continent in several ways in terms of growth and opportunities and development. The United States and other European countries have begun to realize that the decline in France in the region, the Netherlands, Germany and other countries are beginning to register their businesses in the continent. France's position has really declined in recent years and the country of France is struggling at the moment to also revamp its image in terms of business and development and infrastructural growth. France is sending the signal that we have to change the social contract, if you will, between the global north and the global south. Why is this a priority of yours now? What is it President Macron doing? And are other nations hearing that call? As you said, uh, President Macron, uh, from uh, 2017, from the beginning, you know, uh, when he was elected, uh, for him it was very important uh, uh, to have uh, this global vision, you know, uh, when the COVID arrived uh, with Dr. Tedros, uh, President Macron was in front line because uh, he wanted to support the access to the vaccines uh, because he said that we don't leave nobody behind. Mm. After uh, 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 we had economic problems in uh, the European level, we had the recovery plan that was about 750 billion of euros mm -hmm. and uh, in 2021 two years ago he organized in paris a summit to support the african economies and it was it was in this case uh, that we start to speak about the reallocation of sdr and uh, after well, the, i mean just let me pause you this sdr so our viewing public may not understand they're called special drawing rights exactly. and these special drawing rights are really reserved for the big stakeholders of the of the institutions, right? So you're talking about the reserves of these special drawing rights. So exactly, I and uh, at that time uh, we spoke about 100 billion of SDR. That means 
that uh, we can reallocate, this was the new, mm -hmm. that we can reallocate, we can say, the rich country to the rest of the world. For example, France reallocate already 20% and we're going to reallocate 30% and there are many other countries and uh, we continue you know, to call all the countries to support this because uh, the Global South needs our help. And, uh, you know, I was with him uh, in uh, September in New York and uh, he spoke about the new pact with the South. And here we are. So we are here and in June we are going to organize in Paris a big summit, a financial summit where all the countries, all the institutions will be there. You know very well that uh, uh, the vision of President Macron is that Paris is a city of multilateralism. Mm. And uh, we're going to organize the summit where we'll have uh, uh, member states from G7, G uh, G20, uh, uh, the Prime Minister of Barbados, uh, Mia Motley, uh, of course, uh, but also from African countries, the low income countries, it will be an inclusive summit because we need at this difficult moment and with the war of Ukraine and we see the consequences, the inflation and also the question of access to energy, the question of food security, so many problems that we cannot face by uh, ourselves. We have to face all of us together. President Macron, I just want to start off on a very positive note in terms of what I think is evolving here. I think there is consensus that is clearly embraced by everyone that we need to address climate and poverty uh, because they go together, there's a nexus. And as it were, we need to burn the candle on both sides. So that's important, so that's agreed. And we all recognize and accept that we need capital at scale to address the key challenges that many countries in the world face, particularly the developing economy countries. And we also would be agreed that there needs to be more cooperation and coordination between your development banks, multilateral development banks and the private sector uh, there needs to be coordination so that there is no fragmentation which you kept talking about. Uh, we also need to look at the distribution of the special drawing rights. Uh, I, I find it a bit difficult to be told that this is set in the rules and it will forever be like that and that it's either you get zero or you get 34 billion in our view, this is not a zero-sum game. It's a game where we all need to be dealt with with equity uh, in an equitable manner. And there is a need for reform in that regard as well. And the other important thing for this to happen, uh, it will help us not to participate as unequal cousins in these institutions. It will help us to participate fully and uh, so that we don't have a sense that we are beggars, that we are being dealt with uh, out of generosity. I think it's important in the new era that the world is in now that uh, there should be a good measure of equality among sovereign nations. You know, recently, uh, seven African countries uh, decided to go, to go and put a call for peace to Ukraine and to Russia. And we raised a number of issues. Uh, Zambia was represented, Comoros was represented, uh, Republic of Congo was represented, Senegal was represented, Uganda uh, as well as South Africa. So we were all represented, and Egypt as well. So we were all at one, that even as we were going to address an issue 
of the war which has had a negative impact on the African continent, which is the rise in prices for food, rise in prices for fertilizers, we were clear that we are not going there as beggars. We are not going to ask for a favor to both Ukraine and Russia. We were going there to say, open up the Black Sea Channel so that the, sea, uh, the, the, the grains and the fertilizers should go into the world market. So we were not on a begging mission, even as we are in great need as a continent and all that. That should go to demonstrate that Africa is, should never be seen as a continent that needs generosity. We want to be treated as equals. Even in the multilateral institutions, we want to be treated as equals. And if our equity is at a low ebb, there must be ways in which that can be addressed. To us, this is very important. Our sovereignty is one of the things that we hold on dearly to. And we demonstrated that very clearly to both President Zelensky and to President Putin when it came to this issue. Even as there were suggestions that, yes, we can donate this, we can donate that, we said, we want you to release these grains and fertilizers to the world market so that the world can trade in these commodities and other issues we can handle in a different way. I wanted to make that point so that it should be understood where Africa has evolved up to. We want to be key players on the world stage, want to be key players even in the financial uh, markets and uh, in the MDBs. If you consider the French-speaking West African countries, they're beginning to align their relationship with China in several ways. China has invested a lot of money in those countries, and in terms of growth and development, it has entangled most of those West African countries in terms of debts and other things. However, it's so important to recognize that most people in those regions would consider having a better constructed bridge and road and a dam that will provide uh, basic facilities and utilities to the people of the region than a country that will come in to talk about politics and rapprochement. African countries are not what they used to be before. They have transformed in terms of their perspectives, in their operations. Africa has more opportunities and Africa is looking to do business with those countries that are open to do business with them. However, despite all of these challenges, France still have a significant presence in this region. Well, I want to talk to you about this summit. Uh, and I also recently spoke with uh, Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley about her Bridgetown initiative, which I'd like to get into. But I think when you think about the challenges that are unveiling right now, and I've recently interviewed the Minister of Finance of Jordan, the Minister of Finance of Rwanda, the Minister of Finance of, of uh, other developing countries as well, and the, the regular message I hear from them is that the big nations set the weather for the world and they're the victims of the weather. And whether it is uh, focused on food security, as you said, or climate expectations, Malawi having one of the largest and longest period of cyclones in its history. Um, you go to the Bahamas and a hurricane sat on uh, top of uh, the Bahamas for 48 hours. Major, major costs and changes. And I understand this French initiative uh, that, that President Macron is taking on. But where is the United States in this? Where is the UK? Where is the G7? Why does it take a summit in Paris to move to help some of these countries? Listen, the, we live in a difficult period. As you said, we have to face an overlapping crisis. And this is difficult for all the economies, and particularly for the fragile and the low-income countries. Mm. And... Uh, um, you know, I was here in October during the annual meetings here in Washington mm. and um, uh, um, the American push for this reform of the World Bank and all of the G7 countries. And uh, we see now that uh, we understood all of us that uh, there's no time to lose. It's time for action. Mm. 
because you spoke about climate change. We know very well, if I take the example of Africa, hmm. uh, they blame us, the rich countries. They say that uh, you live your life, but uh, the pollution from our continent, uh, it's only 3%. So you have to help us because uh, if we have uh, to uh, face the climate change hmm. and uh, we have to invest on adaptation, mitigation, you, we need money. Hmm. And uh, this is why this is a very important meeting here. And uh, I think that is the first time that uh, concretely all uh, the stakeholders agree, but we have to move on. So this year is uh, very important because we start here, but after, you know, we are going to have the G7 meeting, after we are going to have the Paris summit, G20, the evaluation of the SDGs uh, in September, after Marrakesh and COP28. So the question is that in every step, including Paris, we have to go forward and to deliver. Because uh, every time when you go to a COP28, for example, mm. um, the question is that we cannot create every time a new fund. This is not the solution. We have optimized already mm. the money that we have. And of course, United States, uh, we know that uh, uh, they took engagement but after the question is because of the political system that uh, we promised uh, the question of the SDR, the question of the climate finance that mm. we have to give about a hundred billion of, uh, of dollars. But we know that here the Congress blocked. So it is also for me an opportunity to say to the Congress, please, we need your help. However, this continuous decline will increase if French government does not take a very important step. I want to thank you for watching. If you are coming from one of those countries that you think France has huge influence in your region, let us know what you think. If you think that there are things that France can do to shape its personal uh, image in the continent, we would like to hear from you. I want to thank you for watching The Explorer. We are looking forward to meeting you again in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.